cute interview. We have some really awesome discussions. So I'm Nathan Chan. I am the managing director of Proud Fertility. And uh, yes, I had a new baby. We'll talk more about it one day. But I'm actually here sitting down with an uh, intent parent that I've been supporting for the last, how many years have I known you? Uh, four. Four years. I guess, yeah, four. Yeah, so Proud Fertility opened in 2016. And um, this Proud Intent Parent has been one of my first clients. Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit where you are in your journey. You have one little one here, is that yours? Uh, well, that's, uh, yeah, she's my daughter. She, okay. well, she's just one month. She's one month old. Okay, show off your baby. Let's show off our oh, babies. Yeah. Well, that's, you know. Come on in, camera. Look how cute girl. this little one oh, yeah. is. Little girl. She's one month old, and we have a three-year-old uh, three boy as well. He's, he's, he's in bed right now. He's okay. sleeping. So you have two children. Are yeah. they both from surrogacy or egg donation? They're, or? they're both from egg donation and surrogacy as well. So we, had a, we, we, we are very lucky to, to have a, had a two uh, successful journeys, and we're so grateful to uh, both our egg donor and our surrogates. Exactly. Yeah. So we have this book here. We were just laughing about this. The New Daily Bible. We are not promoting this book, but just the idea of what to expect in your first year. And, and uh, this intended parent and I, we were just saying, like, we want people to know what's it like to be an intended parent as a, as a father. What's your first year like? So are you um, a, an intended parent single? Or are you in a, with a wife or a husband? Or, no, or well, we, I, I have a husband. We're married. So we are a family of four now. Okay, family of four, yeah. both from yeah. surrogacy. So that is I, great. Okay, so I right away started and I said, is she yours? And then I just wanted to bridge that. Like, how does that make you feel? Like, I just asked you, like, you're holding a child. Yeah. And I'm just kind of asking, is she your child? Right? Well, you know what? Like, a lot of people ask, ask this question all the time. They've been asking this question all the time. Like, uh, about uh, first he was with that with that boy like he, is he yours is he your husband who, who is is he okay so um, we're talking about genetics now we're talking about okay. genetics and now the same question comes again I guess it's something natural but every time what I answer is you know what it's not it's not mine it's not my husband's it's just our, our baby child. that's our child because that's the way we see it was just a family uh, and, uh, and have you always thought that way? Because I feel like I'm going to put my intended parent on the spot. Their family is complete. I don't think you want to have a third or fourth kid anytime soon. No, correct? I don't think so. He's like, he's done. Okay. <laughs> but like, I do want to put him on the spot. Like I, when I first met with you four and a half years ago, I distinctly remember you asking me, Nathan, we want to have one child each. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that was a, the, the fun to see. Fantasy. But what does that mean? What does one child each mean? Like, you get one child each? No. What, what does that mean? Well, it means, it means like when we started surrogacy or like researching surrogacy, we just had this fantasy of like, you know, we thought blood, blood connection was very important to both of us. Okay. So we were like, okay, maybe hopefully we can have like one child who is from one your, your husband yeah a long time okay. from myself genetically okay but then i turned out well you know when 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 a boy arrived we both or my husband and i we just realized that it didn't matter who's the who's what they genetically related to okay uh, even though we thought about it at the beginning when he was there it was just like our kid you know our child our okay. boy and it just didn't matter. Or you're our daughter now, right? Or now her daughter. It just didn't so matter. So just a really no? quick thing for our viewers. So for any two sperm source family, um, you can decide if it's a gay couple, let's just say, two sperm sources, they can decide to, to assign the number of eggs that are retrieved from their egg donor or egg source, and then decide, you know, 50% this intended parent, and 50% this intended parent, or it could be 60% one intended parent, or 40%. It's not always like one or the other. So in your case, did you make embryos with one person, or one sperm source, or two sperm sources? We, we did embryos with two sperm sources, because okay. we thought, well, as I told you... That's your fantasy. Exactly, the fantasy, plus we thought maybe they would just increase our chances to have like good embryos. Let's say, if for whatever reason, one of us would not okay. be, uh, you know, the quality was not good, maybe it would sure. be better with another one, so we thought it would just increase our chances, and I think it did. Okay. In the so, end. This intended parent that I've been supporting has definitely 
thought that, but I can tell you, it really turns me off sometimes that there are lots of intended parents who only want that fantasy. One sper one child of this sperm source and one sperm child with the other sperm source. And I think mm -hmm. that's that's really not the great way to go because you're just talking about how a family is, like if you ran into a burning building because your two kids are there, you're gonna be grabbing either one of them, whoever's closest. You don't just grab your child. And I think that's a really important feature to talk about. about. So um, I, one thing I want to talk about was about male infertility. And uh, a lot of men uh, that I've been supporting, um, they actually do have some kind of male infertility sometimes. They may not even be able to use their own sperm. Have you ever had that conversation? Not your own vial, but have you ever thought about that? Like some men may not be able to use their own sperm. Actually, we thought about it because when we first started our journey, we did a, like a sperm test. Yeah, spermogram. Spermogram. We did that from the beginning, but I think we did that very like a little bit too late in the process. So, uh, like looking back, I think we we should have done it like a bit earlier. Yeah. Because it really helps to know if you know the quality is good because it's gonna affect. Uh, your journey or if you can even use it. So oh, yeah. the idea is that like you may some even two sperm source families that I've been helping They don't even have the ability to use one or one of their sperm sources and they might have to use a donor sperm Okay, and lastly like what about the idea of no one's business? I think maybe one of our, our friends or our mutual friends who are intended parents That's what they say. What do you think about that? It's none of, it's nobody's business. Do you go to a straight couple and say hey look your cute kid Is that yours your sperm your egg? Mm -hmm. Does people, do people ask you that? <laughs> well, the... If they, oh, look at this cute little dot of yours. Is it your sperm? Well, the, no, you, you, I mean, you never go to a straight couple and ask this question. And it was it just not cross your mind. And if you did, they would just look at you like you're crazy and, and you're super rude. So what's your advice to people, including other intended parents starting? Just don't ask. It's none of your business. I think that's a really important thing. Yeah. Um, I just love the idea that you said it was our children, um, not my child. So in the end, you do have two children. Are you willing to share? And if not, it's okay. Do you have two children? Are they both related to either one of you or? or? Actually, they're both related to other one. Yeah, other one of us. So you did have your one of each fantasy. Well, well, well we, we did, but you know what? We did because that's what we thought at the beginning. But if he had turned out differently, we will feel exactly the same about our family and, and love our kid exactly the same way. Is that what you thought in the beginning? Oh yeah. You thought from the very beginning you'd be okay with not one child each. Oh no, no, no. From the beginning we thought that's what we would like. But then... You were fixated on it. Yeah. Well, very no, much we, so. We were and, uh, and, and we just, we have changed now that our kids are there. We have completely changed uh, our mind. So, Thank you. You know, we change our minds. That's, that's what people do sometimes, and it's, it's for the better, you know? Yeah. And I think, I think it's also a little bit of this, this video is not just about education and also your testimony, but it's also to kind of give hope to different people. And there are people who are single sperm source families, like myself. There are two sperm source families. They might even be triple sperm source families in this day and age. And they may not be able to use their own sperm. Triple? Yeah, like it could be polyamorous, okay. triad, gay okay. men, or okay. something like that, right? And they can't. There's actually a really cool story, I'll tell you off sign one day. There's three men in the US, they decided not to use any of their own sperm, and they decided to use a donated embryo just because they didn't want that genetic connection, because family is about our children, and this is what the video is all about, so. Hmm. Yeah, Sounds interesting. Good. Sounds good, yeah. Um, any last words of advice for anyone, just about this, especially this topic, like your sperm, my sperm, our kid, his kid, have you actually been hurt or offended or do you just kind of shrug it off and think, hey, I forgive you? No, I'm, you know, I've been offended several times. But offended? I, offended. Okay. I, I, I've been offended several times, but I try not to, like, you know, think about it all the time. You know, there's a moment I'm like, okay, I'll just forget about it. But still, I am offended. So what I want to say maybe to, you know, uh, people, a couple who, who would start a surrogacy, like we did, a surrogacy process, Maybe uh, just stay open. Because stay open-minded. Stay open-minded because what you think now is not maybe what you're going to think two years from now. And it just can affect your whole journey. So let's just stay open-minded. And I wish, you know, some, some, someone had told us this, this advice I tried to. When, when, when we started. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah, you very you tried, much. I tried. I think just to sum it all up, it really, I want to say proud fertility, we're super inclusive. I help all types of people who are young, older, 
you know, two sperm source, one sperm source, like HIV positive. But I am in this because I want to provide an environment for people to grow a family. It, it's not about designing a baby or using whose genetics. And I think that's kind of a story that you were able to share. Mm. And I'm so glad that you came to the one, one, 380, 360, 380, 360, to kind of give that show. Do you want to show off both of our babies since we're both having newborns now? Yeah. Well, yours is smaller. One sleeping. <laughs> yours is one month old. Mine's like literally three days old. I don't think the world even knows I have a child right now. He might be mine. He's mine. <laughs> hey, come on. Come on, little one. Oh, well, she's sleeping, you know? We've been hanging out all day. We have their little Tinder date. Right? <laughs> Kiss. No social distancing is happening here. Thank you so much, Proud Fertility. Um, thank you for your time, and it's been a pleasure and honor supporting your journeys yeah. and that having you, you having Nathan. your two yeah. children. Yeah, thank you, Nathan.